Well, it's what we've been waiting for all year, the 2022 holiday update. It's only been three weeks since my last software update video. Today, I have the new system update 2022.44.25.2, which includes 14 new features and five additional undocumented changes. It's the same as 2022.44.25.1 with just some bug fixes. I received the alert of the new update on my phone at 8 p.m. on Friday, December 16th, and it took about 32 minutes for the car to process the installation. I want to preface this video with the fact that I'm only covering items that affect the Model 3 and Model Y. If you have a Model S or X, I can't discuss them since I don't have those cars. I'll update it now and see what I get. First, I want to say that since I have a 2018 Model 3 with the original hardware 2.5 CPU, some features are not available for my car. In that case, I'll do my best to describe the changes. Warning, I'm going to be going through these quickly, and for more info or to find things easier, look at the timestamps in the video description. Let's go. The first item is Apple Music. Stream over 100 million songs and 30,000 playlists ad-free. Listen to your entire library, discover more music, and tune into live radio stations. Note that a premium connectivity subscription is required to stream Apple Music over a cellular connection. To access Apple Music, tap the Apple Music icon in the application launcher, scan the QR code with your mobile device, and then log in with your Apple ID. After I confirm my ID and log in, there is a page that shows the subscription. If you don't already have an Apple Music subscription, this will start a two-month free trial. If you don't like it, just cancel it a day before the trial ends. I joined and then press Confirm. Here's a welcome screen. Press Continue. This page will give an access request to Tesla to use the Apple Music account. Press Allow. After a few seconds, the car screen will now show the Apple Music app is now connected. Here is the user interface. The Listen Now section shows top picks, recently played. Scrolling down, we have stations for you and other artist selections. Going back to the top, I click on Browse and that brings up staff picks and other categories of music. If I press radio, that brings up stations and playlists grouped by music genre. And finally, if I press library, that will bring up content including playlists, artists, albums, and songs. You can add them by pressing the browse button down at the bottom. Well, that's a brief tour of the Apple Music app for Tesla. Next up, we have scheduled light show. Schedule the light show for up to 10 minutes in advance or watch a multi-car orchestra by setting them to start simultaneously. Celebrate New Year's with the old long sign show or create longer custom shows. I will be experimenting with this upgrade and will probably do a follow-up video covering this in more detail. For the time being, you can set the light show, adjust the volume, Choose a scheduled time. The Dance Moves box can be checked if you want to have moving parts in addition to the lights. And then press Confirm to start. Next we have Climate Control Fan Speed. Adjust fan speed intensity while remaining in Auto Climate by selecting between Low, Medium, and High from the Fan Intensity selector on the Climate Control pop-up. Do this by flicking up from the bottom of the screen to bring up the climate control. I'll change it from manual to auto to show you how it works. Then press the fan icon next to the AC button. The choices will rotate between low, medium, and high. You can press the arrows on either side of the fan icon or you can flick up or down over it to increase or decrease the fan speed. While climate control fan speeds have been simplified when the HVAC system is set to auto, you can still gain granular controls when switching to manual. While in manual mode, you'll have access to the old 1 to 10 scale fan speeds, as well as the ability to tap or use the slider to adjust the fan speed. 
Next up, we have the MyQ Connected Garage. MyQ Connected Garage Door Openers are now supported. Monitor and control your garage door remotely using your vehicle's touchscreen. To set up, tap Controls, Locks, MyQ Connected Garage, Link Account, and follow the instructions. Rumors of this addition have been around for almost two years now. My garage door opener has MyQ, and I use the app on my phone. It's so much better than Homelink, in my opinion. I'll be covering setting up MyQ in a future video. Tesla has Homelink UI improvements in this update. When Homelink appears in the status bar, it now contains buttons to either activate or cancel the opening of your garage door or gate. If the garage door is set to auto open or auto close, the status bar will also display the number of feet or meters before the signal is transmitted. Next up we have Mahjong. The relaxing tile match game has been elevated with a clean, modern design, smooth animations, and a calming sounds. Match identical tiles. A tile is playable if it's open on the left or right and isn't covered by another tile. Continue pairing tiles to clear the board and your mind. To access Mahjong, tap the application launcher and then arcade. It's the second game from the left on the list. It's actually a fairly small game at only 121 megabytes. Let me start it up for a quick view. The game starts with a little tutorial and some pre-planned moves showing you how to match the tiles. I'll do a few to demonstrate. There is a menu screen that you get by swiping up from the bottom of the screen if it's not showing. Options let you set toggles for sounds, time, show dead ends, and show playable. The board button brings up the difficulty levels, tile choices, playing board, and then backdrop graphics. The game button allows you to start a new game, replay, and show statistics. The hint button gives you hints for possible moves. And finally, the undo button allows you to do one or more undos if you make a mistake. If you click on the Brainium button, it pops up with a QR code so you can download the game to your smartphone. To close the game or change the screen size, you can swipe down from the top of the screen. The button on the top left will shrink the game so that it fits in the navigation portion of the screen. You can use these same controls on other games too. Next up, we have Confirm Phone Call Transfer. Active phone calls from a mobile device connected to the vehicle via Bluetooth will now request confirmation before transferring audio to the vehicle. I'll use my phone here to show an example of someone calling me and it showing up on the screen. As you can see, a box shows up on the lower left side of the screen. I can accept or reject by pressing the buttons here. Once connected, I can mute or hang up the phone with these buttons. And now I'll press hang up. Next we have contact lookup. Search the contacts for a connected Bluetooth device. To access, tap the application launcher, phone, contacts, and then the search icon. Now I can type in whatever letters into the search field to get the results. Media controls are closer to the driver for easy access. Look for the icon right here and press it. That brings up the media controls. Swipe up to access recents and favorites and sources. Here are the six sources I use. TuneIn, streaming, USB, Bluetooth, radio, and Apple Music. And then pressing on Recents and Favorites here. Swipe down just to show the media controls. Tesla has reinduced cards for the Model 3 and Model Y. Tesla used to have cards for these models in the lower left corner of the screen prior to last year's holiday update. These cards allow you to swipe between the newly designed media player, your odometer, and trip meters and your tire pressure. Just swipe left or right to access the other information. Tap the card and the pertinent menu page will come up. For example, on the trip card, you can select which data points are included. See the check marks here? You can have a max of four columns. 
Uncheck what you don't want to see and check what you want to see. Swipe one more time and we have the tire pressure card. Press this card and it brings up the service page. Swipe down and that will close the cards. Another thing I noticed on this screen is if you press the headlights icon on the top of the screen, it will bring up a headlights card where you can set the lights to be off, parking, on, or auto. Next, emissions testing mode can now be used from the mobile app. This feature requires mobile app version 4.15 or newer. Long press any quick controls icon from the home screen and drag the fart icon to the top row. And then press save on the bottom. And now you have the magical ability to remotely cause farts to be launched. Especially useful if your significant other is driving the car. And wait, that's not all. Tesla has added a new fart to the emissions testing mode. The new fart name is called Verified and features a Twitter checkmark and signature sound. Take the meaning of this any way you choose. Next we have Always Rainbows. Allow your driving visualization to show Rainbow Road when autopilot is active. To enable, tap Application Launcher, Toy Box, and then Rainbow Road. You'll now see a switch that says Always Rainbows. While driving the car, turn on autopilot with the normal double tap of the shifter stock. You will now see the regular roadway display change to the colorful Rainbow Road. When autopilot turns off, so does Rainbow Road. Next we have Dog Mode. View the interior camera from the mobile app while using Dog Mode or Sentry Mode. To enable Live Camera, tap Controls, Safety, View Live Camera via Mobile App. Note this feature requires Mobile App 4.15 or newer and premium connectivity. It also requires a newer car with a Hardware 3 computer. Next we have Zoom Meetings. Make video calls with Zoom using the interior cabin camera. If you have a Zoom meeting in your calendar, tap the link to automatically start or join your meeting. Participant video and screen sharing are only visible while parked and will switch to audio only if you drive. To access Zoom, tap Application Launcher, Zoom. Note this feature requires premium connectivity and also an AMD Ryzen processor. Next we have Auto Turn Signals. Turn signals can automatically deactivate upon completing a lane, change, fork, or merge. Tap Controls, Lights, and Auto Turn Signals. Of course this requires a Hardware 3 computer to work. Next we have Track Mode for the Model Y. Track Mode enables Tesla's performance-oriented stability control and powertrain settings configured for track driving and is designed to be used exclusively on closed courses and optimized for performance tires. Track Mode allows you to create custom Track Mode settings profiles and record your track day data, monitor the status of your car motors, battery, brakes, and tires in real time. View the G-Meter, a real-time accelerometer, displayed in the cards area of the touchscreen. To enable track mode for your current drive, shift to park, then tap controls, pedals and steering, and then track mode. For more information about track mode, visit the owner's manual. And finally, the last feature of this video, which happens to be undocumented, Navigation UI. Tesla redesigned parts of the navigation UI to improve the layout of your next turn and available options. Previously, there was a module at the top of the screen and displayed your next turn, your ETA, destination name or address, and battery level upon arrival. It also included controls to cancel navigation, toggle navigate on autopilot, and a more button. With this update, Tesla is splitting this UI into two pieces. The first remains at the top of the screen and will include critical information about your route, such as your next turn. 
The rest of the information is moved to the bottom of the screen. This will include your travel time, destination details, as well as options to alter or cancel your navigation. So in conclusion, after a brief eight days from my last update video, we get a huge update that we've been waiting for. We didn't get the drastic UI revamp that occurred last year. In some ways, the updates this year, including the reintroduction of cards, fixes some of the negatives from the V12 update from last December. I would like to see more customization, for example, font sizing and the placement of information on the screen. I'm sure we will probably have some more undocumented features surface as time goes on. I will do a follow-up video that will detail the MyQ Garage setup as well as the scheduled light show. Well, that wraps up this episode of System Update 2022.44.25.2, the big holiday update. What do you think of this update? If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.